This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Why hello YouTube, greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to get another diet review. This is the review for Masterpiece Hot Rod 2.0 or MP28 as he's known by some cultures. This also marks the first, and certainly not the last time, a Masterpiece figure is being talked about since the channel's reboot. And, you know, there's just something about these things that I kinda miss talking about. Like, the mainline has been absolutely killing it these days, but due to budgetary restraints, there's always some compromise that you have to lower your standards for, and here you don't really have to do that. We're paying the premium price, we better be getting a premium figure. Except in this case, mind you, as this is actually a knockoff version of the toy, graciously sent in by a user who goes by ASAF. So with that out of the way, let's see what I missed out on back 60 years and 29 masterpieces ago. So right out of the gate, the first thing I notice is this exquisite purpley red color that I've yet to see in the main line. Like the Studio series I feel gets the closest to it, but for whatever reason I feel like the higher ups when it comes to main lines are hesitant to produce figures in this color. Almost like they think the target audience couldn't possibly like a robot that turns into a Lincolnberry colored car. And here we finally get that, which is just so nice. The front hood gets the flame job, however, unlike the versions that have come before or after it, the colors don't seem to be quite as vibrant, which is a bit of a shame. But hey, at least there's very subtle outlining around the flame decal, so that helps. I'm not too fond of the headlights, though. What they've done here is cast the headlights in a dark, translucent orange, and then painted the back of it metallic silver to give it some depth. Which, on paper, that sounds great, but their use of this darker, semi-transparent plastic isn't doing any favor for the headlights to make them pop and I do wish a little less pigment had been applied to them. Speaking of less pigment, though, the windshield canopy is made of a really clear translucent blue, though I personally don't really see the point of doing this, as all you can see in here is the waist of the robot and the transformation joint. Thankfully, none of this is structural, so there's never really any force put on it, and that's great and all. It's just a shame that there's nothing like MP09's molded cabin here to take advantage of the clear windows. Otherwise, I love the spoiler and how much it feels like a reasonable size, though it does feel a touch more TV satellite than it does an entire rear wing of a car. The fact that the exhaust pipes here are loud and chrome is just plain awesome, though I'm not sure if it's just because it's a KO or whatnot, but there are two chunks taken out of mine. The fact they actually painted the rims of the back tire is nice, and, well, it should be. This is masterpiece after all. And then you get to the back and man, oh man, what a clean back of the car. Super reminiscent of the drive to look up mountain the one time we got a good look at the back bumper. Spending so much time in the main line, you kind of forget what great alt modes the MP offers. One knock to this thing I have, and I do feel this is more character complaint than I do a toy complaint, as this is a near-perfect replication of the on-screen design, but these are comically small wheels. Like, look at these things. They're so tiny. Could you imagine these proportions on an actual vehicle? Like, this is your Lamborghini Aventador. Now this is your Lamborghini Aventador on drugs. Any questions? Anyway, as for vehicle articulation and accessories. First of all, the hood opens up from the side, which is kind of neat. There isn't really anything engine related going on here, seeing as how the exceptionally well detailed valve covers are situated really far back in proportion to the front of the car. But there is a slot here for MP10's Matrix, which oddly enough this KO comes with. I'm not sure why, but hey, at least you don't have to get an MP10 if Hot Rod is all you wanted. The engine block opens up to reveal a square peg, which is perfect for either of the included pistols he comes with, which can just peg in here provided you rotate the handle back. Or you can peg either pistol into the spring-loaded pegs in the back, which is something I totally forgot existed in the Masterpiece line. Ports for weapons, but included gap fillers for clean panels. That's so awesome! As for size comparison, Studio Series Hot Rod, Classics Hot Rod, Titan's Return Hot Rod, and Kingdom Rodimus, Earthrise Optimus Prime, and Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus, Siege Springer, 86 Cup, 86 Blur, 86 Rekgar, and Takara Legends RC. Studio Series Mirage, Kingdom Mirage, 86 Jazz, and Titans Return Wheelie. Buzzworthy Silver Streak, Earthrise Trailbreaker, Kingdom Tracks, and Netflix B. I get none of these are really useful though, considering Masterpiece and other lines, but the alternative is showcasing just G2 Sideswipe, so you're gonna have to take what you can get. So that was vehicle mode. It is exceptionally clean, as it should be considering the line that it's in. The colors and shape are entirely accurate, again, as it should be, with this feeling even closer to the on-screen appearance than the Studio Series version got in its vehicle mode, making this feel more like sports lump than futuristic wedge-shaped car like the Masterpiece, as weird as those proportions are for a car in general. The Transformers will return after these messages. 
This episode of Lazy Eyebrow is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. And, well, yes, by law, I do have to disclose that this is a sponsored segment. This is actually a product I was looking into getting in the first place, and therefore one I highly recommend. Like, for reference, this is my bulky old wallet that has spots for seven different cards and a pouch for money, and then compare that to the Ridge Wallet that I've been using for about a month now. And even though it holds up to 12 cards, it still takes up 51.6% less space in my pocket than the wallet with nothing in it. And more pocket room is just the beginning of its features. Its durable design means that you won't be cracking up your credit cards like I was constantly having the issue with my old wallet, so that you can keep your cards physically safe. And the RFID-lined walls help keep your cards digitally safe. In fact, Ridge is so confident in their product that not only are they going to give you a lifetime warranty on the wallet, they're also going to give you 45 days to test drive the wallet to see if you like it. And if you don't, no problem. Send it right back to get yourself a full refund. So check the link in the description below or the pinned comment where you can order your own in a choice of 30 different colors and finishes. This particular one is the carbon fiber one. And use code LAZYIRO to get 15% off your next purchase. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. We now return to the Transformers. As for transformation, the first thing I like to do is pull down the legs and separate them. Then open up the panels on the back of the legs, extend them, and then close the panel back up, followed by opening the feet. Leaving this the way it is though shows off probably one of the best unintentional Gerwalk modes I've ever seen in a robot. The vehicle is completely intact, the legs are fully functional, and all of that thanks to the design of the cartoon in which the robots barely look anything close to the cars they come from. Anyway, as for the rest of the vehicle, we start by untabbing and pulling away the arms from the vehicle. Next, we fold down the front of the vehicle at this midpoint hinge just to get it all out of the way. We fold in the taillights, we fold in the fenders to watch the back fence pop up by themselves, then we rotate all of that until two pegs slot themselves into the front of the windshield for a super compact backpack, topped off by rotating around the rear wing. Now for the chest. Flip up the whole of the engine block and then rotate the entire thing to reveal a head. Untab the fenders and pull out the shoulders on these accordion hinges, and then fold in the sides of the hood. Once that's done, tab the neck into the windshield and the shoulders into the sides of the windshield to lock the whole torso together. On each arm, rotate it down, twist it around or on the front wheel, and then twist the forearm to get it all oriented correctly. Finally, open up these little doors, pull the hands out and close them, and then fold on the shoulder panels, and you're done! And here's Hot Rod in his robot form, and man, this is kind of weird taking a first look at this figure coming from a place of already having taken an in-depth look at Studio Series and Kingdom. Like, he just looks so awkward looking in comparison. The head sculpt is pretty nice, as all masterpieces tend to be, but you zoom it out, and man, does it ever look disproportionately small to the rest of the torso. A torso of which just looks so unflatteringly flat. I get the whole front slab of a car for a chest counterpoint, so I won't even compare it to 86 Hot Rod who's using a faux chest. However, here's Rodimus from Kingdom that I felt used the existing geometry in a much more natural way versus the equally expensive masterpiece design. I kind of dig the way the shoulders are designed with the whole rotating on the Z-axis around the front wheel, that's pretty clever, and the way the exhaust pipes are situated on the forearms is really nice too. And uh, yeah, he's accurate to the source material otherwise? That's about all the positives I can think of, and I feel like I'm about to rag on Hot Rod's design more of a character than I am the masterpiece, but, like, there's just some things I really don't like here. Like, the legs. The legs, yeah, they're very accurate. They're the dark grey the whole way around and whatnot, and they look great compared to the on-screen, but it just embodies that whole way too far into human aesthetic territory that I just don't personally enjoy. And as such, these legs don't even really feel like they transform at this point, just sort of compress and hide themselves into a pre-built car. And like I said, that's accurate. Sure, but I personally liked how, to a small extent, Rodimus, and to a bigger extent, Studio Series, actually had the rear fenders collapse into the legs, making them feel like they were a part of the transformation too. Because, aside from the fun little car with legs option you get, I think it's really boring how the majority of the car is just this big, dumb backpack. Much like how Studio Series Dino does it, except his excuse is he's a movie character, and Hot Rod is a G1 character. Like, credit due, that's a really clean back, and those pop-out vents are really neat, and it's impressive from an engineering standpoint that they figured how to even do this, but that doesn't change the fact that the entire car folded up like a top sheet, like someone crushed Lightning McQueen and gave him arms and legs. Again, though, more of a character design flaw versus the masterpiece, because he's about as accurate as one can get without resorting to parts fakery. 
As for accessories, Hot Rod features those cool shades he used to spot Trojan Decepticons that work the same way Studio Series does. Retracting the hand shows off what is shockingly a 5mm peg on the end of his arm, which means that, while well, yes, he can absolutely use the included spinning knife attachment which comes in a nice translucent plastic with a gradient silver paint job applied to the edges, he can also swap a Studio Series if you feel like having a more compact blade for your MP or a full-on pizza wheel for maximum discretion for your Studio Series. Mind you, this also means that they can both don themselves a cup arm and play some morbid form of tennis. He gets his two rifles molded in the same plastic as all the other accessories, and they slot into his hands masterpiece style. They don't combine like they did for MP09, which is also kind of a shame. And lastly, he gets the fishing rod, which is a really nice fishing rod, like you can't deny how cool this looks. You can use it to spend some quality time with Dano, or get to know your alternate self a little better, or here's a surprising feature, use the fact that it's actually a 5mm accessory to give it to Optimus for some quality father-son bonding. Maybe they can catch a Whopper, or maybe even a Big Mac, or if they're really lucky, a Dave's Triple. Oh wait, I lied, there's one more accessory. The KO also comes with mp 10 Matrix and all its metallic coppery die-cast self with a center translucent jewel, all of the articulation on the figure of which allows for a much easier time holding it than the Studio Series take, which is also super nice. Speaking of articulation, the head is on a post and silver for full spin and quite the up-looking range. Arms feature a bit of outward movement and a full 360, and taking apart shoulder allows for a bit of a butterfly joint as well, which is pretty cool. A bicep swivel, and thank goodness for that, and you get a double jointed elbow which works really well after you get the past the initial movement, which is annoying since you can't get subtle movements out of it when it's near straight. Wrist swivel and an opening hand, waist swivel and quite the ab crunch, hip skirts that open for full forward, most of the way backward, and all the way outward movement. Thigh swivel and double jointed knees which highlight the less than stellar shin to thigh ratio, which is a bit unfortunate. And finally, feet that go quite a ways forward and backward and tilt a bit. Like all things considered, the articulated range is phenomenal, coming out just slightly better than the Kingdom release. For size comparison, Studio Series Hot Rod, Classics Hot Rod doing his best Combiner Wars impression, Titan's Return Hot Rod, and Kingdom Rodimus. And with them being the same size, I could almost recommend this as your mainline Rodimus Prime if you can find it cheap enough, and you wanted a different take on Rodimus Prime that looks very clearly like Hot Rod. Earthrise Optimus, and Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus. Siege Springer, 86 Cup, 86 Blur, 86 Rekgar, Takara Legends RC, and Earthrise RC. Studio Series Mirage, 86 Jazz, Classics Mirage, and Titans Return Wheelie. Earthrise Smokescreen, Earthrise Hoist, Kingdom Road Rage, and Earthrise Cliff Jumper. And I get none of these are really useful either, so here's G2 Sideswipe, MP Megatron, and MP Soundwave, the only masterpieces I currently own. So that was Masterpiece Hot Rod. He is a fun figure, but not without some annoyances. Though, again, that's just more my annoyance with the Season 3 design philosophy than with MP28 himself, because this figure hits all the marks. He's a really good take on Hot Rod, and definitely fits into your Masterpiece collection as that pre-Rodimus take. And with that, provided nobody sends me another Hot Rod, I'm all Hot Rodded out. One of the characters I'm way less fond of than most, but for some reason has gotten a ton of coverage, like three times now this year. So basically what I'm trying to say is, just please, let this be it. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow. <laughs>